What's up guys? Welcome back for another one. Today we're doing another helmet review. Today you're looking at the Scorpion XO GT930 convertible modular helmet. And I grabbed this helmet because it was listed under $300. So I told myself, well, what kind of helmet could you possibly get, even a modular one, for less than $300? So that's how we got here. Plus, it gives me something to compare my HJC Arfa 91 to that I did a review not too long ago. So check that out if you're interested in that helmet. So we'll talk about specs, we'll talk about styling, and we'll talk about a lot of things, the good, the bad, and how I tested this helmet on multiple bikes. So with that being said, let's jump right in. All right, let's talk specs here. So it comes in three shell sizes, one shell for extra small and small, one for medium and large, the other for XL and 2XL. You're looking at a 2XL here and having more shell sizes is a good thing. It allows you to get a more precise fit for your head uh, as opposed to sharing two shell sizes with multiple sizes. If you're in the middle somewhere, you could have trouble finding a really good fitting helmet. Uh, it is made of a polycarbonate shell has dual density EPS, which is a fancy name for the dual density styrofoam inside the helmet. Two vents, one up top that you can open and close and one in the front that you can also open and close. The visor itself is not pin lock ready and it does not come with a pin lock ready shield, but they advertise some Everclear no fog shatter resistant face shield. So we'll get into that. Um, there's also a drop down visor with this button right here. This helmet does come with a panel here uh, for their Exocom unit. And with that unit, very similar to the HJC, you just pop this cover off, pop it back on. It comes with earphones and in those earphones are integrated microphone. And the other feature to the Exocom system is that the battery is hot swappable. So you can charge the battery and have a spare battery running your comm, which is pretty cool. As for the safety, this is ECE and DOT certified. And that's both with and without this removable chin bar. And we'll get into that in a real, in a quick second here. Looking at the inside, you're looking at standard double D rings. Uh, antimicrobial liner on the inside you get a nice chin curtain and you get a nice neck roll curtain here so another feature here when you open your chin bar and you lock it in the up position there is a lock here you can engage to keep that chin bar locked in the upper position so good to have especially if you like to ride with the chin bar open at times my favorite feature is the modular part and let me show you that. What you do with the chin bar in the up position, there's two tabs here. You pull down a little bit, you push out toward the face, you go down on the other side, same thing, push out toward the face, and this whole chin bar comes right off. Now you can ride it like this. You can be that guy who rides with no shield or anything, just the sun visor or your glasses. But I think most people would go for this thing that comes with the helmet that just snaps right on like that. So now you got a helmet you can maybe wear on your adventure bike or you know if it's super hot you can wear it like this have some sun protection or just go straight to the batting cage on your bike never take your helmet off grab a bat and nobody would notice. Switching them back is just as easy, which means I'm probably gonna botch this now, but same thing, you push it down. Yep, I'm gonna botch it now. Push it down, slide one side out. Push down the button, slide the other side out. Get that off, and then to put the chin bar back on, it's gonna be in the up position.
locks in place good to go kudos to scorpion for incorporating a real easy and intuitive way to remove the chin bar and attach this when you want to that could have been a lot more complicated than it had to be and they did a great job real easy to switch in and out all right so let's talk about the weight of this helmet for a comparison i do have my hjc arfa 91 there on the scale the scorpion weighs just about four pounds on the dot And we'll weigh the ARF 11, 4.9 pounds. And mind you, it does have the comm unit system and uh, these Moto Red mounts front and back. So, you know, give it an ounce or whatever. But about a half pound heavier the ARF 91 is, and it is noticeable. All right, so let's talk about styling. While it is subjective, in my opinion, this is a very handsome helmet. Uh, it's a very aggressive design. Compared to my Arfa 91, it's definitely more of a sleeker helmet, especially right here in the front. But you can see it does have some real nice contours and shapes like that. In fact, if I had to compare this helmet visually, I would probably compare it to the Simpson Bandit series very similar in styling the way they do the nose and the way this is swept here overall i think it is a really good looking helmet but again that's subjective and just to show you guys comparison side by side you may hopefully you can see the difference in how bulbous the hjc is compared to this helmet so something to consider um, fitment is actually pretty good, spot on. Again, I test that to the multiple shell sizes, but let's talk about how I tested this helmet. Now, for those of you who haven't been following the channel, I have two motorcycles which I test the helmets on. This is my Street Bob with the Low Rider ST fairing, and this is my Road King Special with the Memphis Shades War Road Warrior fairing. So, in my experience, wearing helmets on different motorcycles with different setups can yield different results. So take my experience with a grain of salt, because if you're not running a windshield or a fairing, or if you've got a real small windshield, you may or may not feel the same things that I'm about to explain to you. And again, I'm not here to sway you one way or another. I bought this helmet with my own money from Revzilla. So I'm just trying to share my experience and help you guys make the best decision for yourself. So with that being said, Revzilla does have a 30-day return policy, so if you're unsure and you want to try a helmet out, that's what I do. I urge you guys to do the same. They're really good to work with. Shipping is really quick. And anyway, that's enough about that. Let me tell you about my riding experience. So let's talk about the riding experience, the good, the bad, what was different on each bike. So for a sub $300 helmet, I can't really say the bad was bad, but more of a concession conceding to the fact that for a helmet at this price, I'm going to be giving up certain things compared to a helmet twice its price, right? So really good ventilation, very lightweight. I can feel the difference between this helmet and my HJC. Um, as far as head buffeting goes, on my street bob, head buffeting was not a problem whatsoever. At high speeds, this helmet rides great. On my Road King, did I feel a little bit Sometimes, depending on what highway I was on, but even at top speed, this helmet did a really good job. It was stable. My neck wasn't all over the place, so kudos to them for that. Also, the visor can be locked in the upright position. And I tested this out on the highway and, you know, doing speeds higher than you probably should, this visor was locked up, not a problem. The bad with that is there's no detents. And so you have two positions, locked up and locked down. And the lockdown is really good. For those of you who have ever ridden with the Scorpion Covert, you probably uh, feel that at high speeds, that little visor starts shaking. This is locked in and it's great. My issue with this helmet is everything in between. And when I was riding with this helmet, if I had it cracked open like this, 
Again, more so on the Road King than on the Street Bob. The visor would start to creep down slowly as I went faster. So, and no matter what, I would say around 60 miles an hour is where you start to feel the visor slowly creeping down. And again, with the ST fairing, it's less of an issue, but it does still happen just at slightly higher speeds. Another good feature, one of my favorite, is the ability to run the chin bar in the upright position. I was able to go really good speeds on both motorcycles before I started to feel the pull on the top of my head from the wind resistance. So again, it is meant to be ridden with it like that, and that's why it has this lock here, and it does a really good job of allowing you to go at decent speeds with it in the upright position, again, depending on what you're riding, right? This helmet is also glasses friendly with the caveat that if you wear those Ray-Ban Meta glasses with the cameras in there like I do, it is a tighter fit because those are thicker, more rigid glasses than say your standard eyeglasses or sunglasses. Um, wearing those, it was no problem. It was comfortable, it went right in. So in the concessions, we talked about not having any detents the outside visor floating down, right? That's probably the biggest one. The second biggest one would be the sun visor itself. You have two positions all the way up and all the way down. It is not adjustable. And that in and of, in and of itself is not a big deal since it's a sub $300 helmet. But my biggest issue was when I dropped the sun visor, it always felt off-centered. It would always hit one side of my nose and I find myself adjusting my helmet trying to straighten it out the other thing and again to me this is all really fit and finish is the front of the chin bar when it closes it is pretty close to my face if you've ridden with a Rurock helmet and you feel that the, the very front of the helmet is kind of right there that's kind of what this is like so that may turn some of you guys off again it wasn't uncomfortable but you just the presence of the chin bar right there close to your nose and lips is certainly noticeable so do keep that in mind as far as noise goes this helmet does really good with the noise in the helmet is it quieter than my hjc r 11 no but for a sub 300 dollars helmet it does an amazing job with the noise coming with the neck roll and the chin curtain um really really good really comfortable good on both bikes and all in all, I definitely would recommend this to somebody in the market for a modular. Regardless of how much you're willing to spend, this is definitely something to try out to see how much bang you get for your buck with a helmet like this versus another one maybe twice or you know, some of the new ones are three times the price of this helmet here. So all in all, I like it. It did a great job. It's calm ready. It's lightweight. Ventilation was good on both motorcycles. A couple of concessions here because it is a sub $300 helmet and I know I've probably said that a million times but all in all handsome looks good works good I recommend it you guys should check it out if you're in the market and you know what time it is time to like and subscribe appreciate you guys stopping by and I'll catch you on the next one